Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. Today we go out on our EcoDriver loop with the Peugeot 308 plug-in hybrid. We have here the 132 kilowatt engine, petrol engine, uh, 180 horsepower, 81 kilowatt electric motor, peak, uh, peak power, 81 kilowatts, 12.4 uh, kilowatt hour battery and uh, unladen weight of 1,649 kilograms or 3,628 pounds. Uh, we have an eight-speed uh, torque converter automatic gearbox and um, if you are on my channel for the first time, I'll show you the route we're doing. We start on the southern outskirts of Innsbruck, go out of town for about a kilometer in a 30 kilometer per hour zone then we have a, a climb that elevates us around 360 meters, 1100 feet, followed by some rolling hills, a descent, an open road section through some villages, um, the motorway, and at the end, 18 kilometers, 11 miles of city traffic. At the end of every section, we check the overall and sectoral consumption, and at the end, we analyze the whole data. The cameras will be on all the time. A, to, to show how I am driving uh, in order to achieve the consumption we will have at the end and B to prove that there's no need to go extra slow in order to be efficient. The weather today is perfect and I hope you enjoy this and I'll talk to you later. Have fun! At the end of the climb, we have 13.3 liters per hundred kilometers. With uh, plug-in hybrids, and I have mentioned this uh, often enough already, it is normal that when you start with an empty battery, in the first couple of kilometers, the consumption will be higher as normal, as the the battery or as the, as the system tries to put some basic load into the battery for use for example when uh, more power is needed or uh, in case you have a split axle all-wheel drive that uh, the all-wheel drive works. We are now coming to the hills and on the hills it's important to play with the road to use the momentum that you gain on the way down and gain some momentum on the way down put in some kinetic energy in the vehicle accelerate a bit and then on the next flat section or when it goes up you can use this kinetic energy to reduce the consumption of energy and on the way up don't try to maintain the speed at all costs uh, we're talking about hills here and uh, hills are not very long normally so you can afford to lose two three four kilometers an hour or two or three miles per hour on the way up and when it flattens and it goes down you can re-accelerate At the end of the hills we have 9.5 liters per hundred kilometers. Now on the descent it's important to keep in mind that the electric motor is pretty small. Uh, we probably have only 65 kilowatts peak for braking so that means that uh, 
braking from higher speeds, maybe before a hairpin turn, we surely will exceed the regenerative capacity of the electric motor and therefore the friction brakes will be used. So it's important to look ahead, read the road and avoid a harsh braking. We now have 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers at the end of the descent. So you've noticed that the three cars in front of us, they were going not very efficiently into the second flat section. They were way too slow. They were going maybe 41 kilometers an hour where you were allowed and it's possible to go 50 or maybe 52. And so then they had to step on the gas on the flat section instead of just passing this section uh, without any additional energy. Uh, we gained no electrical range, uh, at least none is shown here. You still see zero kilometers. With other cars we often had six to eight kilometers of additional electrical range. But we went over this bridge now in EV mode, so there must be some charge and uh, we, can, uh, we can do some sections in EV mode. Now we are coming to the open road section with speeds between 30 and 100 kilometers an hour. We go through some villages and towns and we'll see how it goes. We're now at the end of the open road section and when we turn right here we see 4.9 liters per 100 kilometers. We're now entering the motorway and here we are restricted to 100 kilometers per hour due to some local laws. At the end of the motorway we have 5.1 liters per 100 kilometers. Now in the city section we have to make sure that we try to avoid braking, uh, try to avoid coming to a standstill, therefore re-accelerating as this costs just a lot of energy. If you accelerate then do it with low revs and a high load and we have the steering wheel shift pedals here so we can use those to keep the revs down but still the load up
well, we're now coming to the end um, of our consumption test with the uh, Visual 308 plug-in hybrid. And when we park the car in here, we see 5.0 liters per 100 kilometers. And now the details. Okay, we now see here the detailed sectoral and overall consumption of our trip on the EcoDrive loop with the Peugeot 308 plug-in hybrid. And here in, on this table we have the comparison with the other vehicles I have tested so far with the other plug-in hybrids. And uh, you see it's bang on average. Um, this type of vehicle is, or this type of plug-in hybrid drivetrain is basically a conventional drivetrain with the, with the petrol engine, with the, in this case, uh, eight-speed torque converter automatic gearbox, and in integrated in that is a device which is basically splitting the power and uh, with the integrated uh, alternator to charge the battery. And uh, this is kind of a, I don't want to sound this uh, disrespectful, but simple way of creating a plug-in hybrid. Uh, it cannot be compared with the likes of a Ford Kuga, uh, where we have a dedicated hybrid drivetrain with just a bigger battery or similar to the uh, Toyota RAV4. But five liters per hundred kilometers, yeah, it's not too bad uh, with an empty battery. And uh, if we uh, keep in mind that we had uh, significantly over 50 kilometers on the electric range test, and I think that's not a bad um, package you get if you buy this car. Talking about the electric range, uh, up here you find the video which I've done earlier on with, the, with this car to find out how long I can get an electric mode. And down here you find my five tips to drive PHEVs more efficiently or use them more efficiently. And if you're generally interested in what I'm doing, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any new video. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.